Hello, welcome back. My name is Chris Richter. Great to have you here. We're going to look at a continuation of a question that I had from someone about creating quizzes and quiz questions. And this one was where things got a little bit more complex and they weren't quite sure how they would go about reproducing this same question type. Now we did look recently at the yes, no, true, false dilemma. Check out the video on that if you haven't already seen it, just to show you how to change a true, false question into a yes, no option question instead. But we're going to look at a way of creating a very unique sort of question type that does involve a table and some data in a table or information in a table. Let's have a look. Imagine you have one question that you want for your students to answer and it's inside a table with a heading at the top and you want to have that you know, music software and the list of music software and then you want to have the brand and they, they choose out of a drop down list what the brands are and then we also have in the same question, which is why this gets a little complicated, the plugin and brand as well. And we have that in a table again with native instruments, contact six. So the correct answers are in red on the right and that will be part of a drop down list. But what I don't want, so let's have a look at how we would go about doing this. So quite simply, I'll just grab all of that, copy that, go into my quiz questions. So into a quiz questions, add new question, Going to go select missing word is the one that we're going to choose for this. So we go add, we'll just call this question one. Get rid of the writing that's in there. I'm just going to paste all of that straight in as it is. I'm also going to make the headings bold and I'll get rid of these and not make them bold. There we go. So a couple of things that I like to do just to make it easier and more presentable is jump straight into the code and where it says table, I just do class equals table, table striped, and do that for both of those tables in there. There we go. And that just makes it a little bit more presentable. Get rid of the col group. Make that table and table. That just makes it a bit more presentable already for the students to be able to view. Those columns don't line up because of the different text in there, so we could make them line up by choosing an exact size for each column. Let's just do that. TD style equals width colon 50%. That just forces that first cell to be 50% in that table and the first cell in this table to be 50% as well. And now they'll line up nice and evenly. So that's the first stage. All I need to do now is grab each one of these. So I'm going to grab apple, call that number one and go bracket, bracket, one, bracket, bracket. And if I go down here to choice one and paste apple in there, that's all I need to do. And I do that for all of them. So number two, all of the answers that is. So I grab all our answers here. Number three, put that in. Number four is Avid. And that just means that they all line up so that number four is Avid. Avid is correct. Uh, the correct answer is the one that sits in the right hand column inside those there. So we just go number five, number six. And to do number seven, I need to blank three more choices down the bottom there to add the extra choice. Go back up and grab the last one, which is waves. And that's number seven. Put number seven in and select save changes. Let's have a look at what that actually looked like. Here is our question for our student. Let's match the question would be. We often put the question in there. I'll write that in a sec match the music software to the brand. And if I look down here, we've got all of the brands listed. Uh, Logic Pro X would be Apple. Studio One is Presonus. Cubase is Steinberg. Pro Tools is Avid. So we can go through and answer all of those. But what I do want to do is separate it so that the plugin brands that are down here only have the plugin brands from the list 
and the music software brands only have the software brands listed over here as well. So we can do that. Let's go back into edit our question. So you'll see that one, two, three, and four are all in that one group in that one table. So if we look at one, two, three, and four, there's one, two, three, and four, they're all in group A. So if we make the last three group B, that means that any of these numbers, four, five, four, sorry, five, six, and seven, uh, will be grouped into group B and only have those answers beside five, six, and seven. One, two, three, and four will only have the top group A answers. Let's have a look and see if that did the right job. Let's preview with our brands. And we've now got Apple Steinberg, Avid, Personas. Look at that. That's all we needed. So the music software brands are now separate to the three plugin brands. And that's how we can separate each of those. Now you're wondering about the question at the top, aren't you still? How do I put that question in? Let's just jump back in, go to our table. And above the table, we'll type in select the correct brand for each music software and plugin from the table below. If we save changes and preview, we now have the question written at the top as well. Select the correct brand for each music software and plugin from the table below. That's it. We've now recreated as a quiz question that table that we started with back over here. And it's fairly simple, uh, nice and easy to do. I hope you found that useful. Again, my name is Chris Richter. Check out the course at the bottom in the description. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if you have specific questions about some of these things. Uh, I may be able to help you. I'll see how I go.